Hi, my name is Jordan Thornsberg, and if you're in the video or photography field, you may have run into these things called ice lights. What's great about them is that they're ultra portable and the light they produce is very soft. But the downsides are that they cost $500 a piece and they only produce one color of light. There's a much cheaper alternative on the market called wand lights. These cost around $80 and they will produce different colored lights. However, out of the 360 LEDs on the wand light, only 40 of them are RGB capable, meaning only 40 of them can change to various colors. What we're gonna be building costs as low as $30 and every one of the 300 LEDs is RGB capable. And that means much more powerful colored light than what you're gonna get out of the wand light. And if that's not sweet enough, an additional $15 to upgrade to a Wi-Fi enabled LED controller will give you a whole slew of additional features through an app called Magic Home. Color selection, macros, noise sensitivity, and more. For this build, we'll need just a few tools. A saw or something you can cut PVC with, such as a PVC cutter tool. Those exist. I personally do not own one, but if you do, great for you. A metallic file, a couple wrenches. Large is obviously what I went with here. I'm just compensating. And lastly, some sort of adhesive. I'll be using PVC adhesive because that's probably ideal in this situation since we're using it on PVC, but I imagine lots of different adhesives would work. And here are the materials you'll need. The first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is create the blade. Now this LED spool has about 300 LEDs on it, and they're just basically gonna be wrapped around this uh, half inch PVC pipe. File out a notch. Ow! To find the appropriate depth for the notch, take your one and a half inch to half inch PVC bushing and put it on the end. You want to ensure that you have sufficient room through which you can feed the wires that are coming off the LED strip. Then remove the paper backing over the adhesive and wrap it up. We'll want to cut that extra bit off, but not so much. You don't want to cut it right to the edge because then you won't be able to put your uh, half inch PVC cap on there. I'm just gonna use tape to tape down this extra wire here. You can cut it off, it won't affect anything, but for now I'm just going to tie it down and get out of the way. Also tape is good for keeping it from unraveling, which obviously would be not ideal. Next we'll be putting together the handle or the hilt, and this will use our one and a half inch PVC pipe. Now we have a brand new mess. We're gonna take our file and create another divot. While it works, there's probably much better tools you can use, like maybe a rotary tool with a uh, cutoff attachment uh, would probably make that a lot easier. The depth that you'll wanna make this varies based on the coupler that you get. Like I've had kind of deep couplers before, this is kind of a shallow one, so that when I put it on here, you can see that I still have a gap where I can pull the infrared sensor out of, and that will allow us to use our remote. Because if it's on the inside, it would not work. We're going to put some adhesive on the half inch PVC. Then we're gonna put it on the one and a half inch to half inch bushing. And then put your one and a half inch coupler onto there. So for the bottom of the hilt, we'll take our one and a half inch coupler with our one and a half inch to threaded half inch bushing, and we will glue these together, and then take our, what the fuck is this? Half inch by one eighth hex bushing, and that should fit right on this threading here. But it's pretty difficult to get it to go all the way in by hand. So that's why we have our wrenches. All right, I'm gnarling this up a bit more than I would like. So now the bottom will have a very strong 3 8 16 um, threaded hole. Now even though 3 8 is pretty standard in uh, photo and video gear, What's even more standard is quarter 20. So I took a 3 8 quarter 20 adapter and screwed it in here. A lot of light stands have a quarter 20 on the top of it. So you just screw this bad boy on there and then you've got this big vertical light. Now let's connect the blade to the handle. Take your battery enclosure holder and attach your nine volt adapter here. 
and feed that through to the top. And the top is the part with the notch here and just stick that out the notch. Now take your LED controller here. I'm going to tuck the four pin around the back here and this infrared sensor will go out the notch here. Jam this in, it should fit pretty perfectly. This barrel adapter can plug in to the LED controller. These four pin connectors, there's a little arrow that shows you which way they go. So make sure you're getting that lined up correctly or it will not work. In order to keep this from rattling around so much, I stick a piece of foam. This can be anything. It can be like a wadded up piece of toilet paper. And now we have our portable macro stick. So if you want to go for the upgraded version, the one that's controllable through your phone, get this little guy. It is the Wi-Fi LED controller. So instead of that white box that I jammed in there, you'll want to put this guy. You'll just need to use an app, Magic Home. I can control the brightness here. I can control on this color wheel what the color is. It's not highly accurate. You can create custom macros, so you can set the colors and whether you want it to strobe between them, jump between them, or like do a crossfade. My personal favorite is the microphone function. It listens to what your phone is hearing. So if you wanted this to be like a party light, you just put your phone to where it can hear the music. Boots and pants and boots and pants and boots. Now something to keep in mind is that when the batteries get low, you're gonna lose a lot of these color options and it's only going to have R, G, and B available, red, green, and blue. Keep that in mind, that's how you know when your batteries are maybe not really low because I had it last for a number of hours with just R, G, B. But when you're full battery, you should be able to access all of these different colors. If you want to run the light with AC power, pull the female barrel connector out of the notch and plug in the power cable that came with the LED strip. When used with a light stand, this becomes a super badass floor lamp. So that is how to build a pretty cheap and powerful and versatile back row stand.